There is nothing more glorious than for us to have an encounter with the Lord Jesus. It is impossible for us to explain. We try. I've been preaching the gospel and speaking about Jesus for 54 years, ever since I met him. And you know, I still don't know how to speak about Jesus. I still feel impotent. I still feel impotent. I don't know how to communicate the greatness of him, his greatness. The testimonies we hear, they speak on my behalf. They speak on their own and express his greatness. So those of you who are suffering, groaning, you've done everything, you've searched in many places, you've fought in every way possible to be free from this mediocre and stagnant life. It is because you still have not yet met the Lord Jesus. Perhaps you do believe in him, but you do not know him. Perhaps you say, I do know Bishop Masuda, but you never spoke to me. You never greeted me. We've never been together, so you do not know me. It is not true. That's how it is. This is how people are. They hear about God. They hear a lot about God, but they do not know Him. And when one doesn't know Him, they do not, they've never met Him, they do not know who He is. But I'd like to give you an advice. Would you like to know Him? I'm going to give you a tip, an advice, which will lead you to know the Lord Jesus Himself, the living Word, the Word that made Himself men. Look what the Holy Scriptures say in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. It says, He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Which means as long as one lives in sin, she has no conditions to get to know the Lord Jesus. But when one confesses his sins and says, look, I do not know you, I don't know who you are, nor do I know if you exist. But if you exist, you see me. And I would like to say that I need you. I'm finished. I do not know what to do anymore with my life. I've reached my limits. I've been a trash. Trash, this is the word. My life has been a mountain of rubbish. And if you exist, forgive me, but because I will leave this sinful life, I will leave this life of transgressions, this old life to follow you all the days of my life. I promise, I promise to do this with you. But first, I need to know you. Make a prayer like this. Say a kind, this kind of prayer. It will cost you nothing. These are words. Words which, if they are sincere, they will produce results. They will change your life. Because as long as one conceals his transgressions, his sins, as the story of George, who was a man who, who had two, two women in his life. But when he opened his heart, the Almighty came to meet him and made him a new man. And this is what has taken place in the lives of those who are sincere. This is the truth. Those who are sincere have the opportunity of knowing God because they are sincere. They say what really they are feeling, what they believe in. Wonderful. Look, my dear friend, the proposal of the church is the proposal of Jesus. The proposal which the Universal Church has for you who hear me this moment is the proposal which Jesus has for you. The Lord Jesus said the thief, referring to the devil, 
came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and life with abundance. So the abundant life is a promise of the Lord Jesus himself, of the Almighty, of the creator of heaven and earth. He is the creator of life. And he wants to give this life to everyone, not a mediocre life, but a true life, a decent life, a respectful life. But Bishop, I want this life. What do I have to do? You just need to believe in him and believe in his word. That's it. To place your obedience and use your obedience upon his word. That's all. If you obey his word, you will take possession of this abundant life and more. Whether you deserve or not is not in question. Because when you express, you manifest a faith, as small as it may be upon the word of God, as small as it may be, this faith makes you just righteous before God, which makes you deserving of your blessing because by faith we are justified before God. We are acquitted before God. We become deserving before God. So a life with abundance is for you, my friend. It does not matter whether you're the biggest thief on the face of the earth. If you believe Jesus gives you this life with abundance. This is our faith. This is why we are always inviting people to come to the church, participate of the services for them to know their rights upon the word of God. Their rights by faith. Their rights which prevails if she continues in this faith. This is why this Sunday we will have the Lord's Supper, which is a participation. We learn in the Lord's Supper the participating, the participation rather of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus said the following regarding the Lord's Supper. You need to understand what the Lord's Supper is. The Lord's Supper. It's summarized in this word. The Lord Jesus said, Whoever does not eat of my flesh and drink my blood, the flesh and the blood are symbolic, symbols of sacrifice. Whoever does not eat of my flesh or drink of my blood does not have part with me. He's saying the following, I sacrificed for you. I died for you. I cried for you. I suffered for you. I also want you to suffer for me. Not suffering in the sense of having infirmity, sicknesses, not to suffer the pains of this world. No, but to suffer means you abandon your sin. You apply your life. You suffer, you are punished for leaving sin, the pleasure of sin, and following in his footsteps. This is what the Lord's Supper is. This is the suffering he wants from us, for us to let go of our sins, to follow him. This is truly painful because sin is something we enjoy. Our flesh desires what is not good. And what is not good does not combine, does not match with God. And he said, whoever does not eat of my flesh, which means to suffer with me in my flesh. I, I suffered in the flesh. Whoever does not drink of my blood, whoever does not suffer in the soul as I suffered, being betrayed, being rejected, being despised, suffering injustice. I groaned for your sake, so I also would like you to go through this for me, avoiding sin. This is what the Lord's Supper is. We read in the beginning the scriptures which says, it says, 
Whoever he who covers his sins will not prosper. He who covers his sins, his transgressions will not prosper. Will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. So God wants you to prosper, to have life, to have a life of quality. Which father? Which father wants to see his child in need? In who is the father who has pleasure in seeing his children sick, divided? With a broken marriage, there is no father who has a pleasure in such. Which father enjoys seeing his son in misery, his child? This, this doesn't make sense. Please think just a bit, just a little bit. He wants the best for you. There is a price. There is a cost. This is not for free. You need to abandon sin, confess it, confess it and abandon it in order for God to forgive you and for you to prosper. Praise be to God.